So there is a great potential of formation of NDSRIs in the drug product and in some cases even in the API manufacturing. As a part of this video, we will try to understand what are those two important activities which can result in the formation of NDSRI. The first one is fluidized bed dryer and the second one is jet milling. So fluidized bed dryer can be used <coughs> during API uh, drying process and also during the formation of uh, or the drying process during the drug product manufacturing. And jet milling is obviously going to be used during the API manufacturing at the last stage when you are looking at the particular particle size distribution. Let us understand how the FBD and jet milling process can become the reason for formation of NDSRIs. Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte and I am on the mission to provide an absolute clarity on such a very important technical topic to the pharmaceutical professionals. In case if you are interested to understand the services provided by the Pharma Growth Hub, please find the description given in the below. Thank you so much and let us begin with the discussion now. So what is NDSRIs? So the NDSRI stands for the nitrosamines drug substance related impurities. Now these are the nitrosamine impurities. Share structural similarity to the API. Means having the API or API fragment in the chemical structure and are therefore unique to each API. NDSRIs are generally formed in the drug product but can also get formed in the drug substance manufacturing states and we'll talk about how this milling process or jet milling can result in the formation of NDSRIs even in case of the drug substance or API. Let us understand the NDSRIs by taking some examples but before we move on to the example part let us understand the the formation of NDSRI process. So you have the secondary amine now this is your API and if API has got the secondary amine and we know that what are the pre-requirements of the formation of nitrosamines, by the way, you must understand there are three important components. The first one is secondary, tertiary or quaternary amine. Plus there is a need of something called as a nitro setting agent. And then there are conditions required, maybe like acidic condition and high temperature. So these are the favorable conditions for formation of nitrosamine. Secondary, tertiary or quaternary amine, nitrosetting agent under acidic condition and high temperature can result in the formation of nitrosamine. So in case if your API has got the secondary amine, as you can see in the structure over here, and there is a presence of nitrosetting agent, and there is a conducive uh, conditions like high temperature, acidic pH, then you can get the NDSRIs as shown on the right side over here, nitrosamine impurity. So this is how the NDSRI can get formed. And these are the examples that is N-nitroso citrally. Second example is N-nitroso lorcaserine and the third one can be N-nitroso desloratidine. You will find number of examples of NDSRIs if you just Google. But what are the favorable conditions for NDSRI formation now? The first one is as far as manufacturing is concerned, the fluid bed drying at an elevated temperature can be the first reason for NDSRI formation and the second reason could be a jet milling. Now the important question is how this FBD means fluidized bed drying and jet milling process favors the NDSRI formation? That is the exact question we are going to answer in this video. But before we move on to this uh, discussion part, let us understand the working principles of the FBD and the jet milling so that we will be on the similar ground. So how the FBD works? What is the working principles of the fluidized bed dryer? And please have a look in the di uh, at the diagram now. You will find there is an inlet air coming over here now. And this inlet air is with the high temperature. This inlet air is with the high temperature. Let me take the different color. So this inlet air is with the high temperature and this goes from this particular bowl. There are spaces available, areas available from where this hot air can get inside this bowl. And in this bowl, <coughs> you have actually uh, have the materials which 
needs to be undergo drying so there is a material present and when this hot air with the high pressure gets inside this bowl now these particles of this uh, material start fluidized in the air and because of this process the drying gets happen and these particles can actually go until this bag also you will see the structure of the bag let me take the different color now and this is a finger like structure so this is the bag this is the bag right and this bag is purposefully made like a finger like structure to increase the surface area and because of that the drying process can happen effectively so this is the fluidized bed process so it is important point to understand during the fluidized bed process the higher temperature is provided and this hot air is uh, blown from the below of the uh, this uh, bowl through the material and because of this friction uh, the solid material the, the 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 wet material becomes dry this is a very effective process and widely used in case of drug product manufacturing in case if you are using maybe a tablet manufacturing process where you have prepared the blend and if you are using the uh, granulation process where there is a little amount of moisture is present so to remove that moisture the FBD process is very common now the second process in case of uh, API uh, treatment is the jet milling to achieve the desired particle size distribution for an API so what is the jet milling process in the jet milling process the compressed air is actually uh, entered in the closed cylinder and this enters in a such a way that the direction of the air is a tangential to the cylinder and because of this there is two important forces get generated that is centrifugal force and the centripetal force now this material gets input from this uh, side inside this cylinder and once this air get pumped inside with a high pressure because of this friction and the collision between these particles between them the particle size of the material gets reduced there is no milling takes place in between there is nothing happens by the you know the physical milling or grinding no it is only because of the collision between the particles they gets breakdown and how and that's how the the size gets reduced so the particles start moving around this cylinder you know around this cylinder the big particles move around the cylinder's wall and once they reduce their size size they can get evacuated from this outlet end so this is the smaller particle size so this is how the jet milling takes place now because of this collision again there is a generation of the heat inside this particular cylinder at the process so in both the FBD and jet milling we understand that the temperature is getting applied or temperature is getting produced so how FBD and jet milling favors in the SRI formation let us understand this <clears throat> so what is the statement given in USFDA's guidance document NDSRI can potentially form in APIs when nitrosetting agents are present in the API manufacturing process or when APIs undergo processing steps that can potentially induce their formation such as fluid bed drying at an elevated temperature and jet milling because this can create favorable conditions in which nitrogen oxides nitrogen oxide is mentioned in the guideline can react with the at risk APIs now what is meant by at risk APIs? Now these are the APIs which are containing the secondary amine or the tertiary amines. We talked about the requirement of uh, secondary amine, tertiary amine for formation of nitrosamine. So we got the secondary amine which is one of the important precursor of nitrosamine. Now what is the second important precursor of nitrosamine? That is the nitrosating agent. And this nitrogen oxide like NO, NO2 or N2O3 can act as a nitrosetting agent if you have these favorable conditions at elevated temperature you can certainly get the NDSRI or nitrosamine now both fluidized bed drying at high temperature and jet milling can create conditions where nitrogen oxides nitrogen oxides which are present into the atmosphere like nitrogen dioxide right here look at here nitrogen dioxide or nitrogen oxide or NO or sometimes dinitrogen trioxide N2O3 
which are common in the atmosphere. Now, dinitrogen trioxide is not much common, it is highly reactive. But in case if it is present available, it acts as a very strong nitrous setting agent and that result in the formation of NDSRIs. So APIs which has the secondary or tertiary amine can react with this nitrogen oxides present in the atmosphere. Now this atmosphere comes from where? This atmosphere comes from because in both the cases, in the both the cases, if you look back, you know, there is a compressed air used in the jet milling process and this compressed air can contain the atmospheric nitrogen oxide. And same is the case in case of the MBDRs. So you are using the inlet air, isn't it? And that inlet air is coming from the atmosphere. So this air can also have the nitrogen oxide. So we understand the source of nitrogen oxides or nitrosetting agent. And if there is a secondary amine present in the API, you can certainly expect the formation of NDSRI. Let us have an example to, to understand this one. So let us understand the presence of secondary amine and example is bumetinite, right? Here is the example. And this is the secondary amine. This is the secondary amine. And this is the dinitrogen trioxide and nitrogen oxides. And that can result in the formation of n nitroso bumetinite, that is NDSRI. So this is the way the jet milling process and FBD process can result in the formation of NDSRI. In case if you have any question about this topic, please put into the comment below and I will try to answer all your questions. So thank you so much once again for watching this video and I look forward to meeting all of you in the upcoming sessions. Take care and bye-bye.